Uh, you've been on your jollies or working or something along those lines. Please yeah. enlighten us on your trip because something always happens to you when traveling. And I strongly believe it's not the universe. It's actually you. I tr- right. This is going to sound really weird when I say it out loud, right? But I tried to buy a little kid's plain meal. <laughs> <laughs> if you creeped up over the top. No. <laughs> Hi, kids. Can I buy you a meal off you for 20 bucks? Sorry, we have to cut that part off. You can't cut that out. You can't say You can't say Keep, every time he says every time either of us say it, just beep it, because then people have to suss out what it is. Like beep, beep, beep. I can't, I can't say a beep. <laughs> Hi, I'm Adam. And I'm Josh. And welcome back to the Breaking Bread Podcast, where uh, this week I have returned from the furthest reaches of the Commonwealth to arrest your ears and eyes if you're watching and uh, provide you with something to watch or listen to while you take a shit or on the treadmill. Or doing your laundry, whatever. I'm back in in short, and uh, so is the podcast. I mean, it's never been gone because we filmed, <laughs> we filmed, <laughs> yeah. we we shot three in a row, right? Which we thought was a bad thing. I mean, it was a bad thing for our health, but um, people seem to like the chaos. How have you been, anyway, man? Before? Mate, I'm all right. It's, it was like you say, it was weird having to shoot all those last time, and again, those that are listening won't actually notice the difference, I guess, because uh, they've the, actually received a, an episode weekly. But yeah. man, that last shoot, like it took me, the, you've been away how long? Two weeks, two and a half weeks? Two and a half weeks, yeah. Like it's took me this long to recover from it. And I, I honestly cannot remember that That I know, that it's podcast. like a blur. I couldn't remember the journey home or anything. When I was listening, it was like, um, I listened back, not that I'd like listen to my own voice, right? But we we, we kind of, uh, we, we proof, proof listened to him, I guess. Right, when George has edited or whoever's doing the yeah, editing. George has got to cut it and then we've got to just double check it in case we're going to get cancelled. Yeah. <laughs> so I listened to it back when I was driving, uh, doing my fucking six hour drive from Montreal to uh, west of Toronto. And I was laughing because I didn't actually remember any of the things that I said. So uh, that, w- that was good. I objectively gave me the ability to say, okay, this is at least reasonably entertaining, or it's making me laugh. We're like two cantankerous old blokes, aren't we? Just sweating, just stewing in our own filth. Uh, but actually, to be fair, it leads us nicely onto the opening of this podcast. Um, we're going to start off with the YouTube comment section. It's time for a YouTube comment from you. All right, yeah, so it's a bit of a special one, given how amazingly the last one went down so well. We've to, got a to bunch... Set, to set the scene, right, the last one we did, right, because I was going away, right, we recorded three podcasts, which were about two... I mean, before they were cut and edited and, you know, chipped away at... They, they were about two hours of filming each or something. Um, so I think by the time we got to the third one, we'd been talking for quite literally six hours straight. So it, we weren't in our right minds. I think people potentially could underestimate how much like brain capacity it takes to just do this and i know like it just sounds like we're waffling on which we are most of the time but there is some some sort of structure to it and in that last one and i could i could not get sentences out you couldn't get sentences out you saw i couldn't even read the comments one of the comments on one of the earlier ones so that that last episode what a mess but what it has blessed us with and i did share i share a few of them on the the breaking bread instagram page i enjoyed some comments uh, so adam let's fire off some of these comments because they're funny as fuck <laughs> am i am i starting you start mate yeah so jordan stanhope dean um says fuck me this was a mess but in the best way hilarious from start to finish josh is secretly a child at heart and adam is far more cultured than i had thought uh thanks jordan i'm, I'm if people say it's hilarious that ma- that makes me feel uh, warm and fuzzy on the inside um so i'm glad you enjoyed it Jordan. That, that that is a belter comment i love that and it's pretty it's it's, it's very true actually you, you are a bit of an old man but what's so somebody actually commented underneath that and said a uh, guy called andy wrong and put josh is a child in a man's body <laughs> while beard is a man in a child's body <laughs> laughing my ass off that, you sent me that last night did you i was like i was, uh, I was laughing my nuts for that i love it like it, everyone's getting involved now everyone's understanding the the banter the low level banter we've got going on yeah, um, yeah. So the next one comes from Bernie Williams. Uh, he's put, I'm 25 minutes in, uh, just had to join a meeting with tears rolling down my face. <laughs> Fecking hilarious chaps. Made my hump day much funnier. Ah, oh, thanks, Bernie. <laughs> That's, does that make you feel good? That, that like, vision for me is sort of makes it all worth it. Like the thought of everybody like in the day-to-day jobs, they're, they're on the lunch break, they're in like a canteen or whatever. <laughs> and they're sat there just like with the, the phone in front of them, just watching us fucking idiots. They're like laughing to themselves. <laughs> And then, can you imagine them having to explain to someone why they're laughing? Why are you laughing? Oh, oh somebody mate. on this podcast just said Branson's pickle maker. <laughs> Am I doing the next one? Yeah, you do the next one, yeah. It's Brian Payne. Uh, 
fuck, lads. You make me laugh. Absolutely fantastic episode, as per usual, guys. Uh, so many fantastic movie suggestions, but even more missed. Have seen each and every movie mentioned. Thanks. Heaps of sharing. Love your work. Cheers, guys. Until the next installment. Peace. Thanks, Brian. Next one was from uh, Dino Silk Music. You guys fell apart in this episode. That we did. And it's simply the best thing ever to watch. Uh, sat on my lunch break watching in the canteen, utterly pissing, pissing myself, laughing. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> That's a good one. Are we doing all of them? Last one. Is, uh, there, is there one more? Well, there's a few more, I think. But, oh, um, two more. Sorry, go on. I, uh, I look forward to two, this one. I look forward yeah. to two podcasts. Small Town Murder and this one. The chaos in this episode was hilarious. The guys uh, bust ass to put out quality and even in a clusterfuck of an episode. <laughs> it shows 12 out of 10 would always recommend. Ah, thanks, Adam. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, last one. This one on Facebook. It popped up uh, a couple of days ago from Steve Wear, uh, Wearmouth. Uh, best ending to a podcast ever. And I actually don't recall saying this. <laughs> right, I'm off to wash my balls in the sink. That they just put good work, lads. I don't remember saying that. It was it was warm, wasn't it? We've been in the <laughs> we've been in the studio for six hours, so yeah. Thanks, bios. Did it, did you see, it was a negative comment. Oh yeah, let me try was, and dig out. For this, you told me it was Sorry, a really negative one. I can't find it. Maybe he's deleted it. Some people, you know, some yeah. some, some, some trolls do have the courage that don't have the courage of their convictions. They end up deleting what they've said. But, like it's surprising that I can't find it, right? And yeah, they may they might have actually deleted it, but it's like an overwhelming like this is the probably the most comments we've had on one video before and they're all overwhelmingly positive you know everyone's just sort of bought into it there's this one that just stood out and it basically said you might as well have not bothered it was, <laughs> it was like it was like sitting at a table where a couple have fallen out and arguing for an hour and i think i don't like all right i get like everyone's entitled to their opinions but if if there's 30 positive comments and then there's that one negative I'm going to probably side with the 30 positive as opposed to the negative. Yeah, but the brain naturally has negative bias, does it not? So you, you're you always drawn to that negative comment. Yeah. Um, but, but that's fucking the, who cares? We put ourselves out here every week for that. We know it's shit. Like, you don't have to tell us <laughs> it's shit. <laughs> right, let's, uh, let's move on with the episode. One thing, I again, I haven't mentioned it in a while. Spotify, somebody actually put on one of the comments recently. Rest in peace, Spotify deal. It ain't going to happen, is it, mate? Like, the Spotify gag's done. I think that's because I fucked it in there when I, I think, actually started criticizing all. I think all. you did fuck it. Yeah. And uh, we... Uh, we uh, breaking bread hq we actually ran our accounts the other day and, and, and we had to do the pluses and minuses of how much this podcast cost and oh, turns out oh. <laughs> it cost a fucking lot of money so adam and i have had to split the bill on this one and you know what's the biggest loss leader so far breaking beats <laughs> that's not a surprise i mean i feel like i'm just gonna go on there and like pity by a th thousand quids worth because no, what i've realized up. is like the the coffee grinder the house that we buy them from is actually the one that's quids in and not us <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> turns out that the margins weren't as good as I thought they might be and when because we've got custom labels done so it cost me four it cost what well, it cost us 400 quid to get labels printed that's a lot of fucking coffee isn't it we're not um we're not, <laughs> we're not entrepreneurs are we <laughs> <laughs> we need more lessons from Mike Winnett uh, let's get back for a third episode <laughs> I fucking love it anyway yes yeah, so if you fancy some breaking beads don't use the discount code just buy the, <laughs> buy the breaking beads New York to California Texas Arizona Best today. Uh, you've been on your jollies or working or something along those lines. Please yeah. enlighten us on your trip because something always happens to you when traveling. And I strongly believe it's not the universe. It's actually you. It's my fault. It's, it's got to be you. It's not my fault. I don't know. Come on, man. People know that I'm a, I'm a, I'm a nice bloke. There's something, <laughs> there's something that always, always bad. Happens. It started badly anyway, because I'm, I remember, you know, the worst part about traveling right, with a bunch of camera gear, is people are inherently suspicious of you. I don't know why, um, but yeah, there was. I, I remember I got. I thought everything was going great, right? Because I go through Manchester Airport, and everyone's going on summer holidays now, right? Because it's that time of year, and I see all these big queues, and I'm going to you know Canada, and nobody's really not that many people are going there, right? So I get straight through. Uh, uh, the, the check in, okay. The get the guy that ch uh, checked me in was. Um, he knew he, he, he was, he looked up and he was like, oh my God, I watch your videos, man. Where are you going? I said, well, this is my ticket. Man. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, I get, I get through and I get right through to uh, security. There's nobody in front of me, right? The guy says, right, we're getting 45 minute rejections on bags. So I'm, because we've got a bit of time here, I'll check your bag, make sure, um, you know, when we put it through a scanner, you've taken everything out that you need to take out. Oh, great, mate. Thank 45, you. What do you mean 45 minute so, rejections? So, you know, like the, the thing goes, it goes through a machine. Yeah. And if, it, if your bag goes to one side, 
It's 45 it's minutes. 45 though. minutes for whatever Whoa. reason. Don't ask me why. But I'm like, oh, this, that's nice. It's the first time I've actually spoke to somebody doing the bag. Sh- I, I get it that it's a hard job. It's not an, a, a nice job, I guess, to do. Yeah. But he's like, oh, he's, he's not just like, you know, put your stuff in the train. He's like, I'm going to help you out. Cool. So my, my laptop comes through. My USB drive comes through. Uh, my drone even comes through, which was the thing I was most worried about, right? Um, then what happens? Uh, my cameras all come through. The bag, which just got, basically at this point, just got wires in it. Yeah. This girl's like, pff, pff, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, I've got to wait 40 minutes now. <laughs> Which is all right, because I was there nice and early. But you know what infuriated me? The amount of people who were waiting for bags, and they'd be like, I saw one couple, right? And this uh, this this guy said to his wife, he's like, it'll be some of your fucking perfume. It'll be your perfume, love, I'm telling you. She's like, look, I packed the fucking bags. It's not my perfume. Comes out, right? And the, the, the guy who's doing all the bag checks with the gloves on and whatnot, he's like, you got some Chanel in your bag? She's like... Oh, it's my Chanel. It's my Chanel. <laughs> the amount of people that that had left liquids in their bags, right? And I'm like, oh, come on now. You've got to do one fucking thing, which is like not have a liquid in your bag or makeup or whatever. I feel like I just had an out-of-body experience. Like, yeah, I can see you on Emmerdale, mate. Oh, <laughs> I got my Chanel. <laughs> that was what I was trying to do an impression of a, a woman who had left the Chanel in her, but I don't know. But um, yeah, so that, but other than that, it was all, it was all right. I don't, until the plane was delayed and we didn't have to board the plane. Do you think it's weird how people get so stressed with... Um, I'm not really a stressed person, apart from when I lost the uh, Scorpion thing the other week. Everyone's like, fucking hell, Josh turned on a dime there. Yeah, I was pissed. But... That's on its way, by the way. We should, do we have to mention... We should, uh, because you mentioned it, right? All right, go on, There's, yeah. no, there's going to be no breaking beard this week, apparently, right? That's because George has to... George? Josh has to... Um, He's going to be on the receiving end of the forfeit, which is either to eat a, a hot pepper yep. or a scorpion. He's not decided yet. Um, so I, I've purchased both, right? <laughs> but the scorpion, as you can imagine, is quite an exotic purchase. Um, so it's on the way, right? So we need, we, before the, the, the whole thing resets and we go again uh, and you lose again, um, <laughs> you obviously needs to eat one of the two. So uh, until it arrives, should, I got a message this morning, so it's been shipped. Right. So I, that should mean, I guess it's going to be in like... Where's it coming from? Like the Amazon from like, like Ecuador? I don't know. It's, no, I think it's coming from... Uh, I got it from somewhere <laughs> called like Desert Shop. <laughs> it's, from, com or something. it's from like Sheffield. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, what I was saying, well, though, like people get so stressed traveling yeah. and like... If I... You're a stressed person. You are a stressy person, which... I don't is, know. It depends on wh- wh- when, when and why, th- Them sorts of environments get you stressed. Yeah, yeah they do. They do. So, but yeah. when you're traveling on your own... If you're traveling with people, I can understand it gets a bit more stressful. But like, if you got stressed by yourself, it's kind of don't make sense because you've it's it's it's, hot, it's all pretty much in your control. Even if people are kind of fucking it about a bit, you've got hours to just sort of get through it anyway. Yeah, no, it's, it's not that I get stressed at the like if things like if a flight's delayed, right? Yeah, that that is not anybody's fault, right? I think it usually is somebody's fault, right? Maybe it's the pilot or something or other. I, don't, I, I it's not a pleasant experience, right? Yeah. Like the flight on the way out was delayed ninety minutes, right? But I, 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 that happens, right? What what winds me up is if you if you're in a, there's a 45 minute queue because 15 people have left some I don't know like the Buxton water <laughs> in the in their bag yeah. when you've just passed 16 signs saying do not have liquids in your bag like that's that's you cost everyone 45 minutes because like you're an asshole, right? I get that people forget now and then, but what like 15 people do it? Pack it in, man. <laughs> So tell us what got carried about this journey then. Like how did, what else happened? So you, you finally got through, you got your bag back after 45 minutes. Yeah, that, that was all right though. Cause I, I was kind of like, I, w- I was wound up at the people that, you know, had left the water in the bag, but I got, I got, I, didn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't in a rush, right? I wasn't connecting or anything like that. Could have been, could have been the person yeah. like on a connecting flight. But anyway, I, yeah, I got, I got my bag back and uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I got on the, 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 the flight was delayed and I, it winds me up when they don't tell you that a flight, you know, that a flight's, are you trying to get, you want me to tell you the story about me getting on with the, oh. sorry, were you going to try and brush over that? I, yeah, I want to, yeah, because you always make me out to be a tyrant. <laughs> <laughs> I tr- right, this is going to sound really weird when I say it out loud, right, but I tried to buy a little kid's plain meal. <laughs> but wait, right, there's context behind this. I know that sounds odd, right, and I got quite a negative reaction from people on the plane, but let me paint a picture for you, right? We can cut out the first story. This is a better one, I think. <laughs> we're um, not cutting out that first story. We, we, so, so we, we're, the plane meal comes, right? And I normally like on the on the plane. I'll I'll, uh, I'll partake of the plane meal, right, on the way there. But like, I'll normally want because if you're in business class, this is not me being a dick. But like, you get a, you normally they say like there are four things on the menu, and you have to give them your choice at the beginning. Yep. So I normally say to them, which is the biggest, right? Because you never really know because if they've got like something like duck on there. 
it's more expensive than say chicken. Yeah. I just want more protein, right? Because I'll normally take a couple of protein bars on with me or whatever. That's important, right? Um, anyway, so this is one of my, you know, what's the biggest meal? She totally sold me one. She said, it's the chicken. Chicken just turned out to be like a shitty curry or something. This right. guy got a big, I saw this guy get a big wedge of beef. Anyway, um, <laughs> so I'm a bit peckish, right? Because that's all I'm eating that day. Yeah. Um, and I finished my meal and um, I noticed like behind, slightly to the left and behind me, there was a family, uh, two two young girls, maybe they were like six, yeah. six, seven, um, flying with, I think, their grandparents. And uh, this one girl was complaining about her food, right? She didn't like it, which is fine. That's like, she's, you know, if you're seven, um, but the, the, uh, cabin crew lady, she came, she took my plate, right? It's my tray. I'm finished. Yeah, cool. And then she, I noticed to take the, this little girl's tray, like right just behind me. Yeah. And she went to put it in and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, is all that food going to waste? She'd not touched it. Right. Yeah. Which is fine. I'm not, so I thought, I'll tell you what I'll do. She's yeah, the, the air, uh, air cabin lady. She says, yeah, yeah. She's going to throw it away. Like, so I leaned over the top of the thing because you get like a little partition. I'm like, hey, hey, little girl, I'll give you 20 bucks for your, for your, uh, for your meal. <laughs> which I, which is fucking actually, weird, that, you know. No, no, I don't think, isn't that weird? Because I, in my, this is what hey, I little was, girl, I'll give you 20 bucks for your meal. <laughs> Fuck him. If, if no, you no, said no, that no, to no. my little girl, I'd be choking you clean well, out. Well, plane. like a grandpa, a, I, I couldn't see a granddad, but I could see a grand, grandma and she looked at me like a bit odd. <laughs> but no, look, 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 listen to my thought process here. This is what I'm thinking. I, you and me, I hate seeing food go to waste. Yeah, yeah. I can't stand it, right? She'd literally not touched it. It wasn't like it was half eaten. Yeah. She'd maybe knocked it about a bit, right? Um, and I thought, all this food's going to go to waste. I thought, I could have just said to the air cabin lady, can I have that food? You know, what's the point in throwing it away? Yeah, yeah. But I didn't. I thought, I'll do something nice. She's probably, this, prob- this little girl's probably going on all day. I've got spare, you know, a bit of cash in my wallet. I'm not going to use it. I only take it with me for incidentals. I was like, thinking about it, I'll, I'll give her 20 bucks that's probably more than the meal's worth. Yeah. Bit of spending money, right? I'll, I'm doing something nice. I'm saving the food from going to waste and I'm giving her 20 bucks so it feels like, you know, I'm not just nicking a meal. Yeah. And the the woman's like, she looks up, she's like, are you serious? A bit like Gerard Butler last week. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> she's like, are you serious? No, sir, we, I, I can't allow you. I can't allow you to buy this passenger's uh, in-flight meal from her. I mean, I can bring you some snacks, but you can't, I'm like, what? Like, am I being... Is, am I doing something wrong here? Like, you could, are you about to throw this food away? Yeah, it's going to go in the bin. All I need to do is be like, have the 20 bucks, give me the food, <laughs> and everyone's a winner. Is that, is that weird? So how did it go down? Like, what was the... But like, in, the end, not, no, in the end, she like, she like binned it, almost like while looking at me in the eye, like, <laughs> this But um, and I'm, I'm just sat there thinking, I felt like a bit of a fucking <laughs> afterwards or something. I'm just sat there thinking like, <laughs> I can't say that, can I? You can't say <laughs> that, yeah. I'm, it's isn't it? I, don't, I can't say we, we have to cut that part out. You can't cut that out. You can't say You can't say keep, Every time he says every time either of us say it, just beep it, because then people have to suss out what it is. Like, beep, beep, beep. I can't, <laughs> I can't say a beep. <laughs> but I'm, I'm sat there thinking like, oh, I've, I've really done something wrong. It's not like I'm in a fucking field approaching like a, a lone seven-year-old child with a, a some fucking Werther's original sin. Oh, do you want to suck on my Werther's originals, mate? Like I'm, she, she's with with like a, a, you know, a pair of guardians. I think your I'm, heart's in the right place. I just think contextually, if it depends how you said, I'll give you 20 bucks. If you creeped up over the top. No. <laughs> Hi kids. Can I buy you a meal off you for 20 bucks? Should I do it? I'll redo it. It was like really friendly. Right, it was like, hey little girl, I'll give you 20 bucks for your, for your food. And she's kind of pricked up as if to say, I, I don't know what her expression was, but it's probably like, oh shit, I'm going to get 20 bucks for something I'm going to throw away. George, what you're saying, man, you saw, you could see it from your angle. Like, did it look like a... It does seem it's a bit a... dodgy, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, can That'll we... fucking teach you, mate. We probably can't say the word <laughs> on a podcast without some kind of ramifications, I would imagine. Well, how is a word? It's, it's, well, in, the, know, it's, it's a in the word, dictionary. Are you I not know, a... Was we made, made fun of... No, I'm not. <laughs> Just to, to fucking clarify. All I'm saying is, I, I thought it was the, that's that's a perfect example, actually. I think of how I don't know how maybe how abnormal I am, but like how I think I'm. Like I don't really have any. I realize it's a bit odd, right? But I'm. Th- no, I'm we know my behind in, that. In my in my head, if I was that, if I was her dad, right, that yeah. child's dad, and some, admittedly, I look a bit odd as well. But like some bearded man says, <coughs> "I'll give you twenty bucks for your meal." Yeah, I mean, like, what what's going to happen? I'm, I'm not doing anything bad. 
Like, let me know in the comments if, if, if I did something bad there. I don't know. I think that'll find I, I won't do it again okay. in the future. <laughs> <laughs> so did anything else happen on that flight from, from your recollection? Did you manage to land safely? You didn't talk to the French lady. Yeah, you didn't no. talk to the kid. You didn't talk to the grandparents. No, you just no. got off, got your car and fucked off. Yeah. yeah? Well, that, by that point, I was kind of <laughs> like, I was all like pumped, you know, I'm going to get back to film a series. Hey, I'm going to do something nice here. You know, I get this, I get this extra bit of food and then I feel like a bit of a knob. For the rest of the job, I was like, oh, I've done, I've, I've been a bit of a dick here. I shouldn't have offered a 20 quid for a plain meal. It probably cost three quid. I was tripping out, actually. I watched your recent video probably yes. What is it? Is it? What day is it? Friday. Yesterday. Thursday. Fucking hell. <laughs> I don't know what day it is. Um, we don't even have the excuse that we've done three podcasts uh, today. <laughs> but I watched your most recent one. You, you're talking about being in Philly and I'm like, hey, I thought he was in Canada. Like, you, it yeah. even caught me out. I'm like, what's going on here? You it's, it's you're so far in advance. Yeah, well, I put, I put like a disclaimer in the description, I think, of every video, at least the pinned comment saying this was filmed two months ago. But yeah, I still, I'm still daily getting like hundreds of messages from people saying, where are you going to be yeah. next? I want to come see you. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I've, I've been, I'm not only am I not in Philly, I've been home to Canada and I'm now back from Canada. It's nuts that. Yeah, so but that's, that's the gig, isn't it? So tell us about some of the videos that you filmed then, because um, you, you explained to us before, to add to your weirdness of the day, that there was one way you could potentially take a, a bit of a oh, ass, yeah. ass pounding. Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> let's be a little bit clearer about that. A comp- like a pants on spanking, not not an ass pounding. Yeah, you could still describe it as an ass pounding. I probably wouldn't, but yeah, all right. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think uh, the Canada, there are eight videos in the, in the Canada uh, series. It's a little bit of a slow start. Because I, oh, I just planned it so badly. I ended, up, <laughs> I ended up driving about a thousand miles, I think, in like the space of two days. But um, I think they're pro. I can't wait for people to see them because I think it's they're the eight, probably the eight, maybe with the exception of episode two, the eight best videos I've ever done, I think. Which is, I don't know, it's, if, it's hard to be objective, but I'm quite self critical. So if I think they're that good, Probably means they're quite good. Yeah, but yeah, one of, one of the videos. I, I, I almost didn't want to give it away, but if people listen to the podcast, I suppose like That's little, kind of little sneak peeks yeah. are like part of what you were, what you expect. So yeah, I think it's episode number five. I think uh, I do a there's a, a burger challenge um, where you get spanked if you lose, and it's not a small burger. Put it that way. Um, so I think that. That would be good. And it's like, it because I knew the theme was really strong. I knew that would be something. You know, it's a bit, I hate to use, to use the word click. It's not clickbaity, right? Because it's, that's what happens, right? But um, it's a, a really strong theme. It's yeah. like, you know, it's going to be popular with people, I think. So I put, it's not only good because of the fact that I potentially get spanked. It's I put like daft amounts of, like it took me over 40 hours. Is that the that one video. that took 40 hours? Yeah, it took me over 40 hours to make that. 40 hours. I know, and it's, it's, I don't know. I think it's like, maybe it's 11 minutes, that video. Wow. So That's not that I'm, I'm not, not asking for like, you know, I don't feel sorry for me, but I, I just mean it, t- it put, I knew it, it was an obligation. I thought this is going to be, it's a really strong theme. So I need to put everything in this video. Yeah. It took me ages to do, but um, I think that that's probably the best video I've ever done. I think objectively. And I think people will like it because it's fun naturally. Um, and uh, yeah, whether I get spanked or not. Um, I'll leave it till the video goes up because it's going to be like fucking two months till the video goes <laughs> yeah, up. We'll see that Christmas. What, uh, so tell us what other things you got up to then now, out there? Like what, what are the challenges? What are the videos? Did you meet up with anybody? Did you? Yeah, like I did. Um, so I did. Uh, Peter McKinnon. Did you go and see Peter McKinnon? I didn't, I didn't see Peter Mac. No, I should have dropped him a DM. Let's, ca- let's collab. Um, about Matty Hapoidja? I, no, I didn't see his little, uh, his, <laughs> his little mini me either. Um, I mean, I would, I, I would love that. Peter McKinnon doesn't like it eat much. You know, I'm looking at him. I think that yeah. dude, he, I think he's, he looks a bit, I don't know if he's vegan, but um, he's built like a vegan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, I like, I love, I love Pete McKinnon though. I like, I, I, I think. brought in some breaking beans. I know he loves his coffee, he right? Does, yeah. But doesn't he have it? I think he's got his own coffee. Doesn't he have Peter McCoffee? Yeah. <laughs> if it's not called that, it should be. Um, yeah, but no, I didn't, I didn't see Pete Mac, no. Uh, I met up with a, one of my eating mates um, called Darian, Darian Thomas, who nobody will know, right? right. Uh, we did like a pizza, a pizza challenge together. Oh, which, can we do that pizza challenge? Can we get that booked? That one that we said we were doing? Yeah, I don't even know if they do it in a moment, but like. The big pizza in that one that Tobinan. Yeah, where was that? I forget the name of it now. I mean, I told them to like message me when they when they were doing it again, and they they, they haven't messaged me. So that's, that is bizarre. Sorry, I've just completely jumped in on your story there. No, but it wasn't really a story. It's, 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 it's mad that like there's a place in in like Yorkshire somewhere, or 
Lancashire that do this biggest, one of the biggest pizzas in the UK. And you DM'd them saying, can we come do it? And they're like, oh, I've stopped doing it, mate, for, for a little bit. I don't know. I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't know. A million eyes on your business. Yeah, a I, million. I, I, that, well, that's a funny story, actually, from Canada, right? So I'm supposed, I, I message, it's not really a funny story, but like, I, I messaged this place, right? Um, that does like a, another big burger challenge, right? And I, cause I normally, I don't know where I'm going to go on what dates, right? Yeah. But I've got a, a broad idea of what exists and where. So I'll message them, usually from my personal account if I can, uh, not from my Instagram, right? And say, do you need any advance notice for this? If so, how much? Can any restrictions on when I can do it? So I know when I'm there. You can plan so it. I, yeah, if I'm yeah. Gonna, if I want to do this on a on a few in a few days time, I've you know I've given them notice. Anyway, they say yeah, yeah, we still do it, mate. Um, not mate, <laughs> still do it, dude, or whatever they're saying in Canada. We still do it, eh? Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we just need 24 hours notice. So I'm like, ah, sweet. So I, I was gonna do that, I think, on day number four. So I messaged him early morning, the day before. Yeah. I said, ah, can I come do the uh, burger challenge tomorrow? They don't reply like all day, it's to midnight. And I'm like, this is a bit odd. And uh, the reply is, um, you know, sorry, we don't do it peak times. And I'm like, I said, can I do it at 11 a.m. on a Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you mean peak times? Um, but yeah, long story short, that, that, that I mean, if a restaurant doesn't want me to come and do the food challenge, I, that, that was actually when I messaged from my Instagram as well. Ah, uh, right. So like, you know, they, I mean, they should have the knowledge to know at least that. that the fucking that, big dick, no, blue, I, I big dick blue ticks coming in. No, that's, yeah, like, boy. that's not it at all. But like, <laughs> to me, like, if, if I own that restaurant and I want somebody to come in and do the challenge, right, which they advertise on Instagram yeah. and people, there's going to be a YouTube video, which, you know, a yeah. substantial amount of people are going to watch. I, I, I just said, well, you said you needed 24 hours notice. I'm giving, I gave you, uh, like 30 hours notice. Um, can I come do it at 11 a.m. on a Wednesday? Can we, is there anything where we can work it out? Is there any time I could do it? And the guy's like, yeah, can you come at like 8 p.m. at night? I'm like, no, never mind. Like, fuck, <laughs> you think that'd be more peak time, wouldn't you, in a restaurant? Yeah, like, what, what, what restaurant is it peak time at 11 a.m. on a Wednesday? And it's not, and it's not peak, like if anyone's going to be eating there, it's going to be at nighttime, right? Yeah. But um, I was just like, well, not in, I mean, if, <laughs> if, if I said, do you have any restrictions? Do you need any advance notice? Don't just say it's twenty four hours. Say twenty four hours, and we can't do it at these times. Mate, like, you must get this, you must get this all the time. Like, the, yeah, well, I, I didn't mind because I just the logistics and planning of of your trips must be a nightmare, especially in another country. Like you say, there's all sorts of stuff going on in different. You know what though? It's that's one of the great things about North America and and, and Canada. Is that technically North America? Yeah, as a probably constitute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there are lots of places where you can just turn up. Like there are at least four places I messaged. I was like, they were like, no, nah, no, nah, just come hungry. <laughs> I'm like, oh, cool. So you turn up and it's a bit more organic, you know, you, they're not like expecting you yeah. and all that stuff. If you want 24 hours notice, that's, that's all right. Especially if it's something particularly special, like yeah. you need a special bun for a big burger or whatever it might be. But like that when people are reluctant to let me film, then I'm not going to, I don't, I don't want to film if they come back and there's any pushback. Yeah. Cause I know that they, they, for, for whatever reason they don't want to do it. Maybe they just marketing it for the, for the clicks and whatnot. Yeah. And they're not going to get behind it and make the video fun. Oh. Whereas then you get people like the place I got uh, with, with the spanking place. They were fucking amazing. Like they were so good. Like staff were so involved in everything. They were all like laughing and joking and the place was quirky. And so I'd, I'd, I'd rather not go to places if they that's don't the want to be there. That's what, that's what I would think of in North America from like places that are going to have food challenges. You'd expect the, the staff to be like well behind it all, wouldn't you? Yeah. It's I, good. It's like it's an event. Yeah. The more, it's more the case there that you, you usually it's like that but you're always going to get some like if you don't want me to turn up that's fine but like i'd rather just why, why have a food challenge on your menu if like people can't do it just yeah. like if you want to get the like promo from the clicks just make a big burger and say hey look what we made today don't say it's on your menu if it's not like i don't i don't get it but um yeah that but that, that was it was it was a good trip on though like it was it's was probably it's like the most work i've ever put into videos and most of the videos i think are quite good and there is some good uh like reactions with staff yeah. or people in that like i'm in one of the videos as a a dude bets uh he bets a, he's, he's quite funny because he's like at the beginning he's like you're gonna get started you're gonna get started i don't want to be in until thursday and i was kind of <laughs> i was reluctant to really put it in the video because i thought i know people in the comments are gonna be like oh that guy's being rude yeah but it was just his sense of humor he was like a he sounded to me like he was from new york and maybe he'd moved up there or something it was quite brash but it was funny and he, he put on he didn't think i was gonna 
do it and he put on like a quarter. He's obviously a tight ass because he's like, he was wearing <laughs> he was wearing a big uh, fancy Rolex. I thought you were. Oh yeah. And I said, he was saying, I can't do it. I said, if I do it, can I have that Rolex? And he's like, no, I don't think so. But halfway through, he's like, I'm going to put a quarter on it. He's not going to do it. He's not gonna a do quarter? It. Yeah. But like the whole way through, he's like, I'm going to lose my quarter, man. I'm gonna, and he looked proper devastated that he was going to lose a quarter. I thought, isn't that like 25p? Yeah, 25 cents, isn't it? But um, yes, yeah, so I got some good reactions. And that's uh, that's one of the, the benefits of... Uh, yeah, that'd have been fucking... What a video. I won a Rolex off a dude in a restaurant. <laughs> won a Rolex off an old dude. You're there in your shit van's top or your Reese's... Reese's Pieces cup thing and you've got a big roll there. You're trying to say that I'm not fashionable. Is that what you're Absolutely. trying to say? Absolutely. That's exactly what I'm saying, yeah. You'd look fucking weird. We both would, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, probably. But what well, you get away with watches, don't you? And the, the last I'm, I, I, the last episode as well is, um, if you want to watch some, some, like get your notepad out, right? Episode number one's good because it's really hard. Episode two is totally throw away. Don't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> episode three and four are solid. Episode five is the best. Episodes six and seven are pretty good. Like seven out of tens. And episode t- uh, eight is second only to the spank episode. Because the, the the last one is like real. It's like a soup, it's like a speed challenge, right? Yeah. It's a type of food I wouldn't normally do. Um, and the prize is really cool. You get like uh, you get the meal free. You get a seventy seven dollar gift card and. Anything else you want, if you finish it, anything else you want in the same sitting, you can get for free. So you can order as much food after as you want, if you want to take the piss. But, Did you um, take the piss? No, I didn't take the piss. Because oh. I'm not going well, I'm like, to take free meals from people and then like order shit tons of food. Um, but they, um, but yeah, the food challenge is really hard. It's like tooth and tooth and nail. Excited. But um, yeah. No, I was, look forward to seeing them in 2024. Yeah. <laughs> 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 now they'll be up in like, uh, so end of September, October. No, it's October. <laughs> Eventful trip then, mate. Mm. It was good. I don't I mean, like, it's pretty boring until you see the videos, but like the videos, put it this way. I'm, I never get excited about my own videos. I always think they're dog shit, but I think these are quite good. So they must be all right. Yeah. Also, I, you know, the weird thing I, I found with this trip is, because I flew into Toronto, right? I've been to Toronto tons of times before, but this is all further east, like uh, Ottawa, Montreal, etc. And Ottawa's the capital, right? And it's like fucking Leicester being the capital of England or something. It's just like a, it's, it's a, I don't want to say it's a shitty city, but it's a pretty shitty city. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not very big. It's not particularly developed. Like you've got Toronto, which is massive. You can see it from miles away. Even Montreal is kind of quirky. I quite like Montreal. Um, but Ottawa, you're like, what the fuck? Why is this cap? Why is this the capital? It's got a nice bridge. The House of Parliament are nice to look at. But like, that's it. Yeah. And you get the feeling that everyone that lives there hates it. Like one of the waitresses was like, I hate it here. Like, I don't know why I live here. She's like, you going to Montreal? I was like, yeah. She's like, oh, it's really good there. I wish I lived there. I hate it here. I'm like, well, it's not that bad. But like, I get it. Cause it's not like for a capital, it feels like it was a, it was a poor choice. Like you wouldn't make. Why didn't she move then? How I, far well, away is know. it? I, I think she was a student. It might, maybe it's like a. How far away is um, from Toronto to what were it? Montreal, or with Ottawa to Montreal. Right. Okay. Uh, no, like only two hours. Right. Two and a half. Quite a long way, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, re- but for those people, no. I remember, like on episode two, I said to the, the, the as I was leaving, um, the restaurant. I said, "Oh man, I've got to drive to." Uh, I was talking to some guy, and I said, "Oh, I've got to drive to uh, Montreal now. It's pretty far, right?" He's like, "Nah, nah. It's only like four and a half hours." I'm like, "Yeah, that's fucking miles. <laughs> they could drive like two thirds of England in that time." But uh, you know, it was it was it was, it was a it was a good trip, a, a very productive trip. Good work trip, mate. It kept you busy for two and a half weeks. Kept you out of our air as well, which was which was nice. Yeah. It's been yeah. peaceful, isn't it, George? So peaceful. <laughs> what have you been up to, anyways? I know I know it's been tough. I saw you were filming. I'm I'm, I'm I got excited because you were filming with Pixie Lot, right? And I thought you were going to ask it to come on the podcast. Po- podcast, ah. <laughs> podcast, Tim podcast that on the podcast, but you didn't, did you? You thought she was out of our league. She's Tim always the one. She's absolutely out of all of our leagues. Um, but yeah, we, I, I shot with. Um, I, I filmed it like behind the scenes of this uh, concert thing, and she was there, and she actually put a picture. Up, so. She, <laughs> she cut you out of the picture. She, she didn't cut, I wasn't in the picture. But like, she cut you out of the picture. Uh, George can pull it up. There's a picture. She put it on her Instagram. She stood there like, 
you know, like acting all pretty or whatever. And at the, if the acting la- the, all pretty, she is she's quite very pretty. pretty. On the left hand side, I was stood there with my camera. <laughs> so I've got no doubt that that photograph, I was probably in it, looking like all dorky. Or, <laughs> and uh, yeah, she, as I sent it to lads, I'm like, I was definitely like, I was there, I'm watching her get that photo taken. But yeah, she trimmed you out, tr- <laughs> cut you out of her life. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't even I didn't even attempt to talk to her. Like, cause obviously, all other artists were around, around the back, and it, it was weird actually. I, can't, I couldn't, you know what? I couldn't tell you a Pixie Lot song. The, so, two thousand eight, she was popular. Two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Um, I'm, I'm not really into pop music, but George, can, like, can I you? Think t- I could even know. Cry me out, uh, Mama do. Oh yeah, you know it. It sounds like a nursery rhyme, but it's not. It's that one that goes like, "What would my mama say?" Oh 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 oh, oh yeah. if I turn me this way. Oh 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 oh. Keep going. I don't know the rest of it, but that was. Uh, um, we got weird things back there. Yeah, I didn't do that. I thought it was gonna have to go falsetto, you know, because it's a. Uh, uh, she has obviously a high voice. Yeah, being a, a lady. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Um, so yeah, if, if Pixie's watching or listening, she's not. Um, I, we do know your music. Is it worth saying you can come on the podcast? And, <laughs> probably. <not. laughs> She's never going to see this. You, I thought you would have asked her, man. Like, are if you I, fucking joking? If, if I'm like, somebody pays me right to do oh. it, to do a shoot, right, and I'm there with um. I don't know, who's somebody like Pixie Lot level of fame? Um, Mate, how fucking nerdy would that sound? If I went up to her, I'm like, like just filming, doing my bits and Didn't bass, she have like... Uh, and like, I'm like, oh, oh hi, Pixie. Ha- didn't you have a handler? Didn't she have a handler? Like, yeah. Like an intermediary? Yeah, yeah. So you go up to the intermediary and say, look, I do this podcast. You, you wait, right, come right, on. Right, I don't wait, know what I'm saying. Let's reenact re- it. Right, you pretend to be Pixie. I pretend to be Pixie yeah. Lot. So I'll go up and I'll go... Oh, hi, Miss Pixie. Um, hi, Miss Pix. Well, you wouldn't start like that, would you? Hi, Mrs. Pixie. You'll be Pixie. Like, this is, what, right, this is how you do it, right? right. right let me try and be as confident as possible here. Hi, Pixie. How you doing? I wouldn't do that because that was me looking at your tits. Look, jumping down. See, you fucked up. Right? Right, right, go, go, go. Right, yeah, but it's, but it's not real, is it? So, hi, Pixie. How are you doing? I really enjoyed the site you just did out there. I'm um, good, thanks, yeah. You can't do that, man. You're taking the piss, well, you're taking the piss out of it now. No, I'm trying to look pretty. <laughs> That's you looking pretty. That's you doing the blue steel look from Zoolander. Let's 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 roll this again. Right. Fuck it, Ali. I see you fucked it. You only get one shot with these no, things. No, no, right, you're All right. right. <laughs> Go on. Hi, Pixie. I really enjoyed your set out there. Um, did you enjoy it? Oh, thank you, little hairy man. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was good. I do this uh, podcast. I mean, it's got like a. We just hit a million listens, mil- million watches on uh, on YouTube. Do you fancy coming on? Like, not no pressure or anything, but it's like a really casual. We've got a studio and everything. Uh, we're in Leeds. Do you ever fancy coming on one day? You talk about uh, your new album. You, you like a weird guy that <laughs> eat a kid's meal on an airplane, man. I'm, I'm not coming on your podcast. That's how it goes. All right, right so fine. Like, opposite way around. Imagine me going up to her. So I'm just like, so I'll, I'll walk. Yeah, up. she wouldn't come on. I don't know why I, I said picked it. it. Yeah, all right. Yeah, hey, do you fancy coming on the podcast? She'd be like, every every every, every got a podcast now. I mean, she's I've dropped the C bomb. Put that out. <laughs> Everybody's got a podcast now, aren't they? Oh, what's it about? Oh, well, this is this is my life, actually. So you don't understand. You're a full-time... No, you, you've you actually had me... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm peaking <laughs> the audio, right? But this, you say this is embarrassing. You've already messaged tons of people that are never going to come on the podcast. Do you know what I mean? People have messaged and they just not replied to me. They'll be thinking, who the fuck's this guy? And it, it doesn't surprise me because, like, the first pitch that sees me holding some big slice of pizza and going, like, mm, some fucking daft thumbnail face. I've got to go do, like... Prof- I've still got, like, a, a real job, so i got a professional well, shoot. You said your fucking favourite film was Jackass, so you can pack it in. No, but I said to if I'm on a job like with some like real professional people and they're like, oh, what do you do? And I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I make videos and I do a bit of stuff on YouTube and I've got a mate who, you know, we've got a podcast and they're like, they can tell, they can tell they're feeling sorry for me. <laughs> yeah, I know what and they're like, like, oh, what, 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 what's your podcast about? And I'm like, oh, well, my mate is a competitive eater and they're going, well, why what do, the fuck's going on? Honestly, that's what it goes like. <laughs> why would you say that? You know what that's like? That's like, and I know I'm going out for a few beers tonight in Leeds, right? Which I've done actually surprisingly often this year. Yeah, Maybe yeah, two or three times one of my new year's resolutions was to you know spend more time with people yeah um but i i, I, and I know right tonight what resolution well, 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 well lynn's told me like i'm too much for home anyway so i know and i know what will happen right because there's always like that occasion when you know you meet like a friend of a friend so yeah. I'm, I'm out with like six of my mates from school or whatever yeah. and w- one of those people will meet somebody from work or whatever and I fucking know every time. Oh, these are my friends. I said, "This is Adam." Yeah, yeah, he's a. And they never say like, "Oh, he makes YouTube content," or you know, he's an entertainer, or whatever <laughs> it might be. They say, "Yeah, he's a competitive eater," and you see him look at me and go like, 
Like, you know, you, they almost can't hide it. And I'm like, why, why would you, intro- like, I wouldn't even introduce myself like that. Like, okay, it's <laughs> my Twitter bio, right? But like, who says I'm a competitive eater? You know what I mean? Like, it just fucking sounds <laughs> dumb. But and yeah, no, like, so what, if somebody, if somebody asks you in future, what do you do? So oh, we have a podcast. I've got a friend who creates content on YouTube. We talk about, you know, stuff. All right, I'll, uh, I'll write that down for next time, for the next time I'm on a, I'm on a professional shoot. But yeah, so Pixel Art's not coming on. However, <laughs> so out of all the guests that we've had so far... That's Danny from Rate My Takeaway driving his... <laughs> he's got a new quad bike. No, no, <laughs> 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 somebody, me- somebody messed me with the other day. They said, oh, Beard, Danny from Rate My Takeaway is in America. I was like, I sent the, you know, the Sean the Sheep meme. <laughs> yeah. This is a sheep going like that. <laughs> All right, it was, uh, what are you selling me for? He, he, he lives down the street from me. I still don't fucking meet up with him. <laughs> I start ragging back. He ran, remember before he said, <laughs> he, he, rang, he rang me and his, his cameraman rang me. And I'm not joking. We're talking three months ago and I haven't returned either of the calls or opened my WhatsApp messages. I still need to ring him back. What a prick, eh? What the fuck were we talking about then? Where were we going? George, George, put this title down. <laughs> Beard starts beef with Danny from Rape My Takeaway. <laughs> Maybe we could do a celebrity boxing match. Uh, <laughs> what a guy. I do like him though. He's a fucking funny guy. Um, what were we talking about then? Uh, I don't know, mate. I don't know. I, don't, I feel like we're on a six hour, hour bender of this again. Um, it's always the one when I come back is like, it is the worst. They're the worst episodes. <laughs> yeah, we get as slow, don't we normally? You were saying... Danny from Rate My, I was saying Rana from Rate My Takeaway. Oh, guests. Right, so, sorry, yeah. So, of all the guests that we've had so far, I have booked every single one. Adam's Blue Tick has got us nowhere. Yeah, yeah, right. Like, it, which is bizarre, really. I saw, I saw fucking, I'm, I'm getting hyped up now. <laughs> I saw um, Paddy the Baddy on some podcast I've never heard of the other day. He looked like he was high as well. Not that, you know, he's fine. But like, uh, I'm thinking, like, this, this dude watches all my videos. Paddy! For sake, Claire. I might have Come an on a fucking podcast. So, here's one for you. So I was with Danny Mitchell at the weekend. We went to a wedding. Honor, Honor's wedding, actually. You know, uh, dies in every film. You, we didn't invite me. You, I, f- I felt like we were, <laughs> was a bit of a bond there. So Danny and I went to Honor's wedding. Yeah. But Danny has been invited on Paddy the Baddies podcast. So. Uh, I'm like, all right. Look, I'm not, I'm not a hard case, right? I'm not a fighter. I'm a lover, not a fighter, right? But like, come on, man. The dude's trying to get started in YouTube as well. I, I've, I've seen, yep. like, Paddy's got his channel. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a step up, lad. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm not kind of person. But on the, on the topic of guests, though, can confirm we've got f- at least four in, in, in the pipeline, which is... Get out of town. Are you we, going to keep them we've, secret? We've had, a, we've had a dry spell. It's been many months without a guest, and we've got four lined up, which is, I think... Yeah. Do you want to, if I, well, one of them's your mate, do you want to drop that in? Now? That's looking pretty promising. Oh, <laughs> Oh, Randy, yeah. I yeah, totally Randy. forgot about that one. We need uh, to book that in, actually. It's like next week or week after, isn't it? Yeah. I, well, <laughs> I, you say that, though, but you know, this is the thing. So I've been trying... Randy's in England right now, yeah. right? Um, or he might still be in Scotland. He's, he's in the British Isles somewhere. Um, and uh, and he, he, he listens to the podcast, right? Which is bizarre. So he actually said to me, can I come on? I wasn't even really... I would have probably tried to get him on. Yeah. But, but he said to me, you know, like, can, I, can I come on? I, I, I thought, yeah, yeah, of course you can come on, man. And he told me that it's going to be down uh, our kind of area. I won't say when, in case you know people try and stalk him or whatever. Well, he tells people where he is, doesn't he? Yeah. He, uh, it's, it's next week, right? So um, I said to him, uh, oh, cool. Um, you know, when do you want to film? Because I know he's got a schedule to keep and stuff. So uh, who, I, th- I think we sorted it out. I said, um, have you got a rental car? Because I'm thinking he's chipping around everywhere. He must have a car. He's like, no, we're on public transportation. I was like, oh, well, I'll, I'll come and pick you up, man. I don't know if you'll be able to fit in the car, which was a gag about his height. Um, but then he didn't reply straight away. So I, was like, oh, <laughs> I, hope, I hope he's coming on. But he has actually replied uh, this morning. He's so. a big dude, isn't he? How, how tall is he? Oh, he's tall. Yeah, he's tall. He's even taller than he looks. Wow. He would. He will. I mean, you joke about me being small all the time, but he dwarfs. I bet he weighs twice as much as me. Yeah, Just because I mean, obviously he's he's built right, but he's also really tall. Um, so yeah, the floorboards will be creaking when he comes in. Americans are, like Americans are built different. I remember when we were like at sea and, and we'd, if we were the American military, like they'd always just been like bigger. Just I, every, all of them were just fucking units. And when you go to America, they, they are like they just seem like a bigger species of human. I don't know what it, they must have some like beef burgers over there, but um, yeah, like the big dudes. Yeah, but like, I didn't really want to like commit to that. Just in case anything goes wrong along the way, I don't want to want to jinx it. But yeah, Randy should be coming on. 
uh, soon. I don't know if uh, Katina's going to sit like it's going to be a double act kind of thing. I don't know if we've got room or if you want. If you haven't had four people at once, have we? Speak for yourself. Hey. <laughs> Welcome to Beard Swingers Party. <laughs> can't, can't think of anything worse. We've got Brian Lacey, who is a comedian and commentator in mixed martial arts, a, a good mate of mine, a funny dude. I'm excited to have him on. I'm excited for you to meet him, actually. He's a, he's a really nice guy. So that Ooh. should be a good laugh. Yeah. Um, maybe Mr. Matt Armstrong, the guy that I told you about, the YouTuber that does the uh, repairing cars down in why, Leicester. Why is it maybe? Because he's horrendous at emailing back. So he's sort of confirmed for us. This to sounds like me. It sounds, sounds like, like me whenever yeah. I get a, a message about I'm like fucking... An, um, I'm like a relentless, like needy, needy girlfriend, just like emailing him, just like reply. Cause he'll busy water, so it'll just go to the bottom of it. Like he'll get emails all the time. So I just keep, keep pushing it up. So we've got some agreements yeah. out of him, but we'll see. Uh, who was the other one? There was one more, but I forget all that. I don't. That's not definitely not confirmed. So, but for four guests to sort of see out the oh, I, well, I'm Rand, I'm Randy. But see out the year. That's not some not bad numbers, really. I think it's, I'm Randy then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, right. Well, hopefully, yeah, hopefully we can get Randy seems really up for it. So I guess it'll just be dependent on uh, his schedule. But I fully got like a little, uh, I got a little playlist sorted for him as well. If I do pick him up in the car, because he really likes um, what's the best way to describe it, like. Uh, crap pop music like he likes to uh, like miley cyrus and uh <laughs> tell me some other people like that george uh justin bieber yeah yeah Stop. Ray Jepsen. well actually though to be fair she had tom hanks in uh, one of her music videos that's pretty epic right? and to be fair t- two of the only two songs that she did that i know are actually quite good but anyway yeah i'm, I'm getting like a but yeah hopefully like uh you know Rand- randy comes on and we could yeah, chat to him about stuff. I feel like a third wheel on that podcast if Randy comes on because you've got like two competitive eaters you were talking about, all your mates and Well, food. I mean, Randy's not a competitive eater, is he? <laughs> <laughs> no, but he, no, Randy's great though. He's good, good value. He'll have some good stories as well about, yeah. you know, um, you know, if you want to ask him, he's probably a little bit more forthcoming as well than, than me. He'd probably care less about getting cancelled. <laughs> saying stuff about not but, but like uh, you'll probably talk about maybe restaurant experiences and stuff like that that maybe it's what probably worth saying then if you've have, if anybody that's listening or watching has got any questions that they want to put to randy put them in the comments below um and we'll we'll vet them and make sure we've got like an archive and we'll just do a quick fire round we'll put it on instagram as well um but for the next section of the show we're going to drop into your favorite one your favorite bit what is it fathering fails Till he's bumping ahead, falling down the stairs It's time we hear the tales Of Josh's father and fails So have you endangered your child's life this week? Right, listen <laughs> Rule number one As a dad If you're around your, your family So if, I, like, if I'm with my mum or my dad Or whoever, my sister That then becomes like My child becomes their responsibility because she's our responsibility for all the time that we're looking after her. Therefore, if you're in the company of, you, of your family, she, they take over. They, they take over. You can put your feet up, have a beer, like whatever. So we, we went went down to uh, like Somerset for a week. All the family went down. Somerset. Somerset. Come by and harvester. And, uh, you know, we're all going well. I, I abdicate all responsibility. Didn't, she didn't get like run over by a combine officer. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that on the Phoenix Phoenix Nights? No, Max and Paddy's Road to Nowhere. Oh, no, but farm was like, my wife was run over by a combine harvester. She's buried over there. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's one of the best jokes from the show, that. That is good. That, that, that sounds like it would be a highlight. I'm not a big Peter K fan. Go anyway, on. anyway. Yeah, so abdicate all responsibility, especially to my mum mom and my sister. And... Uh, in the living room of the house where we, we, we rented for a week on like an Airbnb, there's this like solid, solid wood table like this. And she dodged it for like three days. Sound, she's running around, she's super stable. And then this one day, she comes running in, trips over like this rug. And I'm not kidding. Of all the places she could have hit, whether it were like the top of the table, the bottom of the table, or these four legs that are just like... Solid, like my biceps, just rock hard. <laughs> yeah, she, <laughs> she she bounces her forehead like doof, straight off that, and it just eggs out. And I'm like, oh my! For those God. of you outside Yorkshire, that's forehead. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> you just forehead. Um, and what she? Uh, is she alright? She was alright. Yeah. So apparently, like, if it swells outwards, you're all right. This is like, I feel like it's an old like wife's tale. Like, if the swelling comes out, you're all right. But if it doesn't swell, if the swelling's gone inwards. You need to. How would you bring know? an amber lens? How would you, how would you well, know you'd have an egg on your head, wouldn't you? 
Anyway. But I don't think that was my fail. That was like a, a, a family team effort. And because she weren't my responsibility at that point, I blame my, my mom and my sister. Because like... Because it's handed it past the book. She's their responsibility now. So as father and fails go, I don't think that one's on me. That's but what, ultimately... I Paul, think ultimately, so it, it, ultimately so it's on you. Um, <laughs> I suppose she was going to grow up big and strong though, at least. Yeah, I mean, th to be fair, they, but, they say babies bounce and... They fall over all the time. I suppose you get, I always say, uh, I always think that you've got to kind of, I remember like when I'd fall over when I was, not as a baby, right? But like when I was a kid, right? And that's part of like how you learn to avoid doing things. So yeah. like if you smash it off a table, maybe don't come sprinting into the kitchen at like 40 miles an hour, right? So I suppose you got to, otherwise, I mean, you'd be like the boy in the bubble, right? You'd never know exactly. um, what not to do. They've got, to, they've got to bounce a little bit, get dirty, just, you know figure it out for themselves i think that's part of life I, of all the ones that you said i can, I can i've can. i seen like my my nephew do s stuff like that a few yeah. times um so yeah i mean like that's not, I, I feel like i can't judge you too harshly for yeah that. i don't think that one was that bad i mean like the one where she fell off that little bike and and cut her head up and that was definitely my fault because she was far too young to be just that going, to be going so low on a bike <laughs> at 12 months <laughs> yeah that was stupid but that's yeah. that mate that, that's that's the uh, story of the injury of the week but she was all right though, yeah. She's fine, yeah, she's fine. Right, last but not least, Mr. Beard. Are you texting you now again, yeah? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know why I got my I, I just think I just got my phone out. That um, came up in conversation on Melody's, you... actually, by the way. What? My dad brought up the fact that you were talking about your nan's sex life on the podcast because my dad listens. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this. I, I realise it's out of the ordinary for people that don't know my gran, but if you knew my gran, I, I've heard things that I should never have heard, <laughs> tell you. Do you know how many uh, jobs my grandma's had? Go on. Like 16. And one of them was working at a chemist. I thought, man, the amount of people, I, they should look statistically back in history to see if there was like a massive spike of deaths locally. <laughs> which was like, I'm thinking, why, how did you work? You, I mean, she's good at maths, right? I've seen a Netflix documentary about this. I'm sure I have. Hey. Speaking of, go on, are you, you going to tell us something that's on your, your emails? No, I just, I, th I was just being really rude. And uh, I just, for some reason, started... Um, what a prick. Checking Speak, my, uh, speaking of documentaries, have you seen uh, Woodstock 99 on Netflix? No, you keep talking about that oh in the chat. I've not, seen, I've not seen it. But what's so good about it? Just tell so me that real so quick. quick. So the promotional material of it on Netflix, I thought were pretty shit. I looked at it and I'm like, oh, it's one camera. I don't really want to watch that. And then I started watching it and it's about basically they tried to like remake, spoiler alert, they tried to remake Woodstock from like the 60s, which were like all this like peace, hip, hippie spoiler love. Spoiler alert, it happened in 1999. No, yeah, I mean, for spoiler, <laughs> spoiler alert for the documentary, those that haven't seen it. Uh, yeah, they, they had like the regular Woodstock, which was, you know, like sort of peace and love and hippy dippy stuff. And then they tried to remake it in 99 when it were jackass and, and you know, punk rock days. Long story short, they, they put all these like kids on an Air Force base in America in the middle of summer, put on this big concert and just treat the kids like shit. And then because it was like, like punk rock, they were all just getting more and more hyped up on fucking drugs and getting dehydrated. And eventually- Are you trying to say that there's a correlation between punk rock lovers and drug use? Yes. So what are you trying to say? Yes. Uh, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I, I, and I don't they know they literally burnt this fucking airfield down because of how they were treat and other things at play. But this three part documentary series was incredible in my opinion. Right, let's close this bitch down. Yeah. Last question for you. Is there going to be a Christmas video number three? Oh. Um, <laughs> what the I don't know. About, well, I want to try because I just like, I, I think to do three would be satisfying. You know, I'm going to maybe call it quits there and never do it again. Um, it's just a question of time. And there's like, you know me I mean? Like, it's, oh man, it's, it's been, it takes me so much time to, to do, to edit, uh, to make videos now more than it ever has before, just because I put so much time, there's such a weight of expectation that they're going to be good, that I really try and put on that. So it's hard to find time, um, but I would like to, yeah. So, and if I do it, it it'll be better than the last one. I've been invited to a recording studio actually, if I want to, if I've got the time to. Yeah, uh, you've got to do it. Have, you, got, have you picked out any songs, any samples, any... Uh... Any in mind? I have actually. Um, the art, the art, I'm not going to say what it is, right? But the, the artist that did it has been mentioned on this podcast already. It's not Pixie Lot, just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got an idea. I've got a couple of ideas in mind. I wanted to do a duet with my sister, but um, 
I think it would be too hard to coordinate that, especially because you're giving me grief. But, oh, God, we don't have to film another video, do we? <laughs> I don't have to take another five grand from you, do I? Five um, grand. <laughs> but um, I would like to do another one just because I think it's a good... Co- I think this... I just actually... That's a funny thing. I just made the donation last month. Oh, to really? Stroke yeah. Association. Last month being July. So it's taken from that December. long yeah, yeah. to get all the payouts from everywhere. Because I thought like, I could pay it off in bits. Yeah. Because I got like the stuff from uh, iTunes pretty quickly, I guess because that's purchases. Yeah. But then Spotify and Apple Music came in like way, way later. But it made like 20, I think 2,400 quid or something like that. That's good, isn't it? Which I mean, it's not an astronomical amount, but it's it's better than nothing, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, it helps, so. doesn't it? And <clears throat> again, like this year, you it should be, it obviously it could be bigger and better given the fact that you're, surpass 2 million subscribers. Yeah, but I also could put like bags of subscribers and be like, what the fuck is this? I'm unsubscribing from this channel. <laughs> but I want to, this year I want to do like, uh, one thing I will say is I want to do like an, a proper cheesy kind of like AE style kind of synth, not, not, you know, cause like last year was kind of really, the first year was like just an indie song and I didn't yeah. really change the style of it. I just changed the words. Yeah. Um, and then the second year I just, it was a bit more indulgent. I want to do like a proper, it's music that I'm kind of into, like I don't really like Simple Plan, but that um, kind of punk rock style yeah. thing, spitting on the camera and all that shit in the video. But this year, I, th- I want to do like a, I want to do like a, like a Rick Astley style, proper cheesy '80s. <laughs> and I've got an idea in my head, and I've like so I put like so I've been doing some demos on. Um, I've had a little bit of time to put stuff together, but like that not- video with uh, David Bowie and Mick Jagger, where they just what's that? Uh, what's that song? Uh, um, that video is horrendous. Yeah, I don't want to make it. I've already got like in my. If we can get it, I want to get. It, I want to film it at the you know the Domino in Leeds. George will know it. Yeah, jazz club. Yeah, it's like an underground. They've got the neon sign that says Dom. It's like a small club, right? Yeah. And it's no. It's a. It's below a, a barber shop. I used to get my haircut, um, Lord's Barber in, but it's below that barber shop, and it's nobody uses it during the day. So if anyone knows anyone at the Domino Club. Reach out. Uh, let us know, yeah. I mean, we could just message him, right? <laughs> By which I mean, Josh can message him um, to book it out. Like, But I think we could get a bit of dry ice in there, something and make it proper. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, and we could maybe film it in, uh, what was your idea last year to film it in, not in 16.9? Oh, in like a, in sort of square format. It would yeah, yeah, yeah. five by four in it. So like, I've, I've got all these ideas in my head. So if I don't do it, yeah, I'm definitely going to do one. What am I saying? Yeah, I'll do it. I'll, I'll try and find time to do it. And um, if I have to take a month off in January as a result, then yeah. I'm... I'm a little bit scared, but I, it's excited to do a third year of Christmas videos. The, if we do it though, this, there won't be a, it'll, I, like I, you know, I said Rick Astley. Yeah. The reason I said that is because that is a video of one man dancing like a tit for yeah. three minutes. Yeah. There's not going to be any band. There's not going to be any masking. There's not going to be any <laughs> camera spitting. Um, it will just, well, it'll be easier to film, I reckon. Yeah, you reckon? Well, is it a slower paced song? Because obviously that we did the chicken wing song. It was like super like, down, 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 down. We, in that, in that <laughs> opening intro, we must, I must have, there must have been fucking, 10 angles. Like we cut, I cut every half a second. No, it's like, the, I mean, it's the, beep, I don't know what the BPM is. Um, it's like that kind of pace. What's that about 120 BPM? That's pretty pacey. So it's not, uh, no, but because of like the style of it, it's, it won't be, I don't want it to be as frantic. The, the, the whole spec I gave you for the last video was make it hectic. Chaos. Yeah, but this isn't, no, this would be, it would be. <laughs> with Li- with Liam, the big roid head chasing you down the street. That was the best part. <laughs> Um, um, yeah, and uh, so yeah, no, it's just gonna be. I, we're gonna lean into that, like making myself look a tit part. So yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I might just, I might even take some dance. Do you know anyone that like coaches dancing? Tommy's missus in there. Tommy's serious? Miss, yeah, absolutely. She's a dancer, yeah. and she does choreography. Are you serious? Hundred percent. Yeah. I'll, I'll get. I'll get. A, we'll get. I'll Need get a dance routine. Dancers. Backup dancers. Me and Mike's little noodle arms. All <laughs> yeah, you realise, yeah, if you say you need backup X, Y, Z, it's going to be you and Mike. So, yeah. oh, mate, it's exciting. Well, um, last thing I want to say then, if in November, December time, if we potentially put on a live show in Leeds, a live podcast. It's like the Who album, Live at Leeds. Who would actually come? Like, we need to know this. I'm going to, I'll put, Put a comment below, but there possibly could be a link where you can register interest if I can get something organized in time. Um, but we genuinely need to know if people will turn up. And Because if 50 people say they'll come, we'll book a 50-seater venue. But if <laughs> if 1,000 people come, we'll book a 50-seater venue. 1,000 <laughs> <laughs> people aren't coming. Uh, but yeah, if that's what you're interested in, we've got some really good ideas for our live show. It ain't just going to be us chatting shit. Dr- judging by the amount of people that get really mad that I've just been to the local city and I've not told them or something, yeah. you, I would imagine maybe some people might want to come, but like, I, 
I can't imagine why. No, it'd be chaos though. We've got some good ideas. We haven't told you any of it as well, but George and I have got some good ideas. Uppers. Is George going to be doing the, the, if we do it, would George do the jingle live? <laughs> Absolutely. There might be uh, need, some live music. the in-house band. <laughs> yeah, sorry, the in-house band. Mate, that's been good. It's been, uh, well, fucking as ridiculous as always, but we got through it. That's uh, a fresh episode in the bag. None of us has fallen over yet and sweating a dick off in here, but. <laughs> <laughs> Catch you on the next one.